Today, I'm joined by video marketing expert. He is the founder of Innovate Media, a video marketing company where he works with brands and businesses. He's also the creator of the Engage Video Marketing Academy, where he can teach you how to create awesome videos for customers and clients, and also the host of the Engage Video Marketing Podcast, Ben Amos. Welcome to the show. G'day, Mark. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. I'm really excited to chat with you. I can tell just based on your previous conversations, you really know what you're doing. I want to start here. One of the things I always love to talk to entrepreneurs about is their first dollar. Walk me through, how did you get that first client? How did you sell your first video service? Uh, for me, it started uh, 12 years ago. Uh, for, I mean, I'd moved from uh, basically a salaried employee as a, as a high school teacher into starting my own business. And that first step of getting a first client was, was not easy because I, as a video producer, you kind of need, needed to have some kind of, um, you know, work to show so people would actually pay you. So I actually did, I shot my first wedding uh, for a colleague at work uh, for free. And so that was not my first dollar, um, but it was certainly felt like I had earned more than a dollar. And then off the back of that, basically, um, I randomly out of the blue, um, I set up a website and someone filled out the inquiry form on the website and booked me to film their wedding. Um, so yeah, it was kind of took me by surprise. Someone I'd never heard of before um, paid me some good money to film a wedding. So that's where it all kicked off for me and uh, haven't looked back. Love that. Love that. If people are willing to pay you for it, that means you're on the right track. And look, that's kind of what this show is all about. It's about how to create awareness for yourself. So you don't yeah. need to go out and do all this one on one. So people come to you. So I always like hearing that sounds like you're doing something right over there, Ben. Okay, so let's get a little bit practical, tactical about what you're doing with clients now. Okay, so a business calls you up and say, Ben, What's up with video? Everyone's creating video nowadays. I feel like I need to get on this train before I miss it. Where do you start with someone who's just getting that first step into video production? So for so many in business, as you say, Mark, they recognize the need for using video somewhere in their business. So video is everywhere. Every social media platform is a video platform and you can't go anywhere online or social media without coming across some sort of video content these days. And, you know, the stats are crazy that, you know, over 80% of all internet traffic will be, will be video by 2020 this year. Right. So uh, I don't think there's any denying that video is something that businesses need to pay attention to. And, and for us as a video marketing agency, we have clients come to us and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for video. So either they've seen something that someone else has done and they say, we want that, or maybe they're redesigning a website and the web designer says you should have video on your website. So then they, they're coming to us for that reason. And the, the critical thing is most of them are coming to us for the video. But when we, kind of ask the right questions and pull it back to why they want a video and what they want to achieve with their video. In other words, when we ask them about what's the strategy behind this video, we usually turn up nothing. We usually end up with blank stares or uh, uh, I don't know kind of a thing, right? <laughs> and uh, that's because for most people in business, they're focused on creating video for video's sake. We need a video, let's create a video but they're not thinking about where this video fits within their wider marketing strategy and how this video can actually be set up to get results for them. And so that's where we, that's where we make a difference and we help our clients really understand the strategy behind the video. And I'm sure we're going to dive deeper into that in the conversation today. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, that's kind of the key. Like you said, I think what most people end up doing is taking their phone, shooting a little video, posting it up and seeing how many likes they get or maybe how many shares if they're lucky. But like you said, you got to be more thoughtful. What is the purpose of this video? I think when most people think video, they think, well, I want people to click the link and buy my widget or my service, right? But what are some other examples of some reasons you might use video for your business? So for video, it, it really is all about, as you say, understanding the purpose or the goal for the video. And to understand the goal, it's understanding what you want someone to do, think or feel after they've engaged with a piece of video content. There's a few things at play there. There's, there's do, take an action. There's think, if you change their thought around something, um, hopefully that aligns them towards the messaging that your brand or business wants to communicate. Or feel, and that feel thing is critical because video is very powerful 
as a form of communication to connect on an emotional level with your, your customers. And when we recognize the power of emotion in helping people take action and the role that emotion plays in decision making from a, from a brain science perspective, then we kind of can't ignore the power of, of the emotional pull that video can uh, can provide in a marketing strategy. And so that's where it comes down to is looking at the journey that your customer goes on to actually make a decision to buy from you. Cause ultimately that's what you want to do as a business is sell product or services affect the bottom line. Right? So what we want to do is to make sure that we can reach the customer at the right time at different stages along that journey with the right pieces of video content that move them further towards making the decision to buy from you. The problem that most people face with video is they try and create a video that either does everything that's attempting to do everything, mm. or it's just focused just on making the sale. It's just on, I want someone to buy my thing. So I'm making a video that's all about the sale, but ignoring the rest of the journey as well. Okay. Okay. So you, you gave us a lot, a lot in this little two minute segment here, but a, a lot of really good stuff, right? So key, you want to make them feel something, right? I think generally speaking, you want to make someone feel some sort of pain or some sort of desire for, you know, they want a, a specific impact. Um, yeah. But the problem is, I think the problem that most people have, again, when they're creating a video is they're saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go for that right hook. I'm going to go for that uppercut. I'm going to go for the sale in this initial ad video. They're going to click the link. They're going to go to my website and then they're going to buy my pair of shoes or, or t-shirts, whatever that item might be. But do you think, how do you think that that first video should look? This is the first time your customer has actually seen that video. What's the type of feeling? What's the type of message that we want to get across that person first off? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly like you said there is people, people want to feel first. They want to make that emotional connection first. So people, you know, make decisions to buy based on an emotional connection first. And mm -hmm. when we recognize that, whether they're buying a t-shirt, a pair of shoes, the services of a law firm, whatever it may be, whatever that decision to buy is, it always, the journey starts from a phase of awareness of a need. And that awareness phase is where the emotions come into play. So either they're feeling pain or they're feeling gain, like excitement or, um, or if it's, you know, let's talk about that pair of shoes, for example, maybe, um, you know, their the decision to buy a new pair of shoes is based on a self image thing, or it's based on a particular event that they're going to. So there's emotion tied into that. Right? Mm. So when we recognize that that emotion is where that decision making starts, that's where we need to reach people with our video content first. So you talk about from a marketing perspective of a cold audience, right? These are people who have never heard about your brand before. They've never heard about you. Maybe they're not even really thinking about buying what it is that you sell at this stage, but they're at the, the beginning of the journey that will eventually lead them to buy from you if you reach them with the right content. So that first piece of content really ideally needs to set your brand up with the right emotional connection with that ideal customer. So, you know, bring, for this is example, bring awareness through that feeling, give them a feeling, mm, bring absolutely. awareness. We're not really selling. What about trust? Is trust an important thing to, to kind of pepper in there? How can we implement trust? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, trust is critical. There's the, the old marketing analogy of people, people need to know, like, and trust you yeah. before they buy from you. Right. Yeah. And I think it's this no thing that, that we're talking about first, before we even move towards trust, because the goal of, of a brand awareness type video. So this, this, I guess, top of funnel video that's more emotional is to get people to buy in to your brands and what you stand for and who you are before you get them to buy from you and buying in is an emotional thing, right? So mm. it's where you, your customer aligns with you and they, they understand why you're the right brand to buy from you know big brands like nike for example do this beautifully when we think about buying a pair of shoes for example their brand awareness type videos are all about the emotion of of success in sport you know it's all about um you know come the the brand comes alongside and celebrates what it means to be an athlete right that kind of brand awareness content no matter the scale of the business is where that emotional connection starts and where you can 
bring power into your brand before you try and sell anything to anyone. Yeah. And then from there, it comes down to trust, right? Because from there, if you can get that good emotional connection, then you need to position your brand as the right fit for that person and that they can trust you. And that's where further content, as we move down the, I guess, the funnel, um, really comes into play here. And we can break that down further, but did you want to go further into that that top level of content first? Uh, well, no, yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to hit these points. So, okay. So let's, let's, let's assume, right. Let's assume that you've, you've checked off a few of these things. You've, you've brought awareness to your product or service, right? We'll use shoes in this example that we've, we've brought up that feeling that just do it. You'll jump higher, you'll run faster type of feeling, right? To say, you know what? I want to learn more. I'm going to just click this link, right? So they click the link, they get to your landing page, we probably should have some video there too, right? And, and how are we gonna take, how are we gonna evolve this story for our customer here? So it's recognizing that in many cases, and it depends on the, on the path to purchase for a particular brand or product, but in many cases, people go through a phase of now consideration where they're weighing up their options or they're doing their research. So yeah. now they're, they're kind of in the process of deciding to buy something. So from a marketing term, we talk about the middle of the funnel and this is where people have an intent to buy, but they haven't committed to buy. So they're doing their research typically. So they'll go to your website or they'll go to your social media pages or they'll be Google searching things or YouTube searching certain phrases because they want to find information that's going to help them make the right decision for them. And what you want to do here with your content is to provide value right? Um, to educate or inform or inspire uh, the, the customer, the potential customer, so that they, they trust you, they know that you're the right fit for them, and so that they understand the value that you're going to provide to them if they make the decision to buy. So in the example of shoes, for example, what you're going to do is to create maybe content where uh, it talks about um, or it celebrates some of the, the use cases of, yeah. of particular types of shoes, right? Um, or maybe if it's, you know, sporting shoes like Nike, for example, it might be video content that helps them uh, run faster or jump higher, uh, it helps them improve as an athlete and still not talking about the actual shoe that you're going to buy, but it's helping them achieve, uh, you know, better results that aligns with the product that they're going to sell. So it, Critically here, it can't be sales-based content. It needs to be what value can we provide to our ideal customers so that they build that relationship with us as a brand um, so that when they are ready to buy, then they're more likely to buy from us. Love that. Love that. So once you've gotten past the awareness, they've clicked, they're in your, your funnel, let's say, or they're in your, in your journey. Now it sounds like what you're doing is you're trying to overcome or you're trying to build that trust, right? You're, you're saying they're in their research phase. So they're in the research phase. You're building trust with your video, maybe some testimonials, right? What, what's our goal with this page? We want them to click another link probably, right? What yeah. happens when, what, so what, what's the next part of the journey look like then? So that, that type of content we're talking about there, it, it may live on, on your actual website, but recognize that most people, when they actually get to your website, they're further down the journey. They're actually an intent to buy effectively. Mm -hmm. So that kind of content's probably more likely what I call social engagement content, which is more used, say, on your social media channels, or it's more of your typical inbound marketing kind of an approach. Might that be, not to cut you off, but might that be like, um, like a retargeting type of video, perhaps, you're thinking, you know? Yeah, in an ad campaign, if, if we're mapping this out as a, as a paid funnel, then this would potentially be a retargeting kind of a video. But organically, this is the kind of content that you share organically through your email campaigns, through your social media pages, uh, on your YouTube channel, that sort of thing, right? Um, because then the goal of that content is to, to get someone who's now interested and ready to buy to actually go through to some kind of page where they can take that purchase decision. So this is when they will click through to your website, for example, or to your product sales page or whatever that may be for your particular brand. And this is where the content now needs to actually address the rational objections that someone has to potentially buying from you. So to use the shoe example, so now they're actually on the product page where they can see the shoe, they can potentially see the price, they're looking at a few different options, but what's preventing them from pressing that add to cart button or making that purchase decision? 
So we can use video here to actually overcome some of those objections, like, mm. um, you know, show how the shoe fits or, you know, talk about the features of the shoe, or maybe it's going to talk about your refund policy, for example, because maybe that's a, an objection is what if the shoe doesn't fit and I need to get a refund and send it back to you. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different ways, but the goal here is really all about getting that conversion to take place. And recognize here that these types of videos for the goal of conversion are very different to those first types of videos we talked about that are about that emotional awareness building. Mm -hmm. So here we need to be talking about the rational stuff, the facts, the features, because that's what people want when they're making a decision to buy. They're about to part with their cash. So they need to know they've got valid questions and they need to know the answers to those questions. And that's what your video should do at this point. Love it. Love it. And we're kind of going over a very wide array. Of course, if you're watching or listening, you can learn more about what Ben does at the engage video marketing.com. And he can really break this down in a way that can, can help you get much more thoughtful. I'm curious, Ben, when you're working with a new client, approximately how many videos do you suggest that they create throughout this whole process? Like total, what, what would you say to them? So that can be really varied. And, you know, when I talk about developing a video strategy across the full funnel, like we're talking about here, sometimes it can overwhelm a business because they think to themselves, oh man, Ben's saying that I need to have videos, you know, for awareness, videos for social engagement in that consideration phase. And now we need videos for conversion and so many videos and we've got a limited budget or where do we even start? And the reality is, is you can use multiple videos in multiple ways all the way through that funnel. But where you need to start is where I guess you're going to have the most impact for your brand or business. It's all about strategy, right? So it's all about identifying first, what do we need to, what do we need to change in our business? Like if we, you identify that, you know, the gap currently is that not enough people really know who we are and what we do. So you probably need to focus on creating some brand awareness type video first. Or if you recognize that we get a lot of traffic to our page, but not enough people are actually converting. Well, then that's where you focus first as you create some videos designed to overcome objections and, and make the sale. So be strategic about where you're using videos and how they're used in different ways along that funnel. And, and that's where you can be successful. So the answer to how many videos do you need is, is kind of how long's a piece of string, right? Because <laughs> the goal is to have multiple videos across your full marketing strategy that you used in different ways for different purposes. Yeah. But the critical thing is to be strategic about where you use those. Yeah. I mean, that, and that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. What are your thoughts on thank you videos or, Hey, you got the shoes. Now you want to add on the sneaker cleaner. Do you think it's a good idea to just continuously just add on all these videos and make that part of your strategy? Absolutely. And it's an awesome question because the reality is, is that once the sales made at that conversion stage, that's not the end of the funnel. That's not the end of their customer journey with a brand or a business because yeah. it's important to recognize that once someone's bought from you, then they potentially can become your advocates um, and refer new people or buy from you again. And from a video strategy perspective, I talk about the goal here of delight, delighting your customers and using video in a way that improves the customer experience or the client experience. And some examples like you just mentioned there, Mark, for example, using video to talk to them about, other products, share information about other products they could potentially buy that support the purchase that they've just made or thank you videos, you know, thank you for purchasing from us or even re-engaging past customers. Maybe it's uh, six months since they last bought from you and you can send a video, even a personalized one-to-one -one video message that says, Hey Mark, um, you know, we noticed that, you know, it's been six months since you bought that thing from us. Um, you know, hope you're getting a lot of value from it. Did you know that we can do this and this and this? So you can re-engage them with some, some other things that maybe help them in their journey as well. So here for the goal of delight, I guess personalization is where it's really, really powerful whether it be personalized in a direct one-to-one -one way. So you're actually producing a video that calls out the customer by name um, and you're sending it directly to them or videos that are personalized to the customer journey that they went on. So, you know, you're sharing a video with them that is directly related to the purchase that they made or to that where they are at in their life 
now six months after they bought from you, for example. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it it makes total sense. And and this really mirrors what I was just speaking to earlier today with uh, Shep Hyken, who is all about creating that, that special, going above and beyond, create a customer experience, delight them, like you so put it. And I just want to put in a quick interjection there. It can These personalized videos can seem overwhelming at first, right? But just a, a little quick tip that you can do is you can have a nice, let's say, two minute long video. And then just at the very beginning, you say, hi, Mike. And then you just put that little hi mic at the beginning of your video and all of a sudden you don't have to shoot an entire two minute video and edit it. You just shoot the two second intro and that's a way that you can maybe make it personal. Maybe absolutely. Personal. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about uh, strategy in this specific funnel, this specific journey, but there's so much going on on social media. You know, you look at someone like Gary Vaynerchuk, who's just posting three times a day on Instagram and on TikTok and all these what, what are your thoughts on that as far as just picking up your phone, doing a quick live video? Should that be an important part of your video strategy as well? I think the, the biggest thing when you reflect on what people like Gary Vaynerchuk do, for example, is that they have the ability to be everywhere. And it, it may seem, you know, that he's just posting content everywhere, but there's a very clear strategy behind what he's doing there. And he's got the the team and the capability to, to keep it up. I think when people see creators and influencers like that, putting content everywhere is they think that they need to be everywhere as well. And the reality is for most brands, businesses, or even personal brands or influencers, that's not possible. And that's not possible to do it well. So I always talk about the analogy of fish where the fish are. The critical thing to any kind of video strategy or marketing strategy in general is to really know who your audience is, know them better than they know themselves. And part of that is understanding some kind of a behavior profile of your ideal audience. So knowing where they hang out and where, where you're going to show up for them and nail that channel before you try and dominate on multiple channels. So be strategic about what you're doing. Yes, just going live from your phone is certainly a powerful strategy, but not without some kind of a, an an objective behind doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't just add to the noise because there's too much noise out there anyway. And if you're just creating and creating noise, then you're just going to, you're going to hit a wall. You're like like going to get a result. Exactly. And you'll think you're doing the right things because you're being busy with your video creation but you haven't thought strategically about it necessarily. So it's not going to get the results. You're going to feel deflated. You're going to give up and you're going to say, well, video didn't work for us. So that's, I guess my caution there is, is be strategic, know your audience, find out what channel and consider what channel is going to be your primary distribution channel to kind of focus on, whether it be you're going to focus on YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and, um, and really nail that first. Yeah, I've noticed that LinkedIn is really blowing up right now. There's a lot of people that are really honed in on LinkedIn. That's that's all they do. I'm I'm kind of everywhere. That's that's the way I and I kind of take it. Um, but you know, I, I, it's just it's 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 hard to really lock in. But I think the way I see it is continue to try new things because one of the things that makes me nervous, uh, Ben, when I'm looking at these brands is sometimes they focus way too hard on one social media platform. And then if something happens to that platform, like Facebook, for example, they, they kill the organic reach and they increase the cost of the ads, like all of a sudden you could, be, you could be in trouble, which is why you're probably making sure that you're delighting and you're bringing that special experience the whole way through, right? Yeah, I think critically what we're talking about here is, is purely social media strategy here um, yeah. because an effective video strategy is much wider than that. You need to be, you know, using video to engage your customers, to re-engage past customers, using video on your website, using video in paid campaigns. There's a whole lot more than just, um, you know, publishing video on social media. And, you know, I'm with you on, on the fact that, you know, build, putting all your eggs in one basket and building your, your brand on rented land, you know, um, because that you don't control those channels. Um, but well, yeah, that's why I guess like you it, said you, you build an email list and you're, you're emailing these videos. Maybe you have a text, you have a text community as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah but 100%. I, I, I think wherever you are, video should be 
a part of your plan. Um, and of course, you can learn way more, go way more in depth with an expert like Ben at engagevideomarketing.com, where he will walk you through the process. And I think you'll really like that. Also, your, your podcast just hit over 200 episodes as well. Isn't that right? No, we're at about 147, right? 147, now, so okay. Nearly 150, yeah. So we're not quite at 200 yet, but we'll, um, we'll get there soon. So, <laughs> Did, yeah. Just keep trudging along, but you, you definitely provide, it's, and it's all about video. So if you're looking to get into video, that is the place you want to be, the Engage Video Marketing Podcast. All right. Ben, I want to hit you with a few rapid fire questions here before I let you go, if that is all right. Okay, let's see ben. where it goes. Yeah. What is a must-have item for under 25 bucks? What do you have to have? Uh, an iPhone case because I keep dropping my phone. A good one. <laughs> That's probably not under twenty five dollars to be honest. But could be. It could be. It could be. It depends where it comes from. That's a that's a good one. Those screens uh, are expensive to replace. You ain't kidding, brother. You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. Even the insurance sometimes doesn't work out. But that's a whole another story. Yeah. Get your get your case, kids. Go. Yeah. Not cool to, to. It's not cool to have protection. All right. Put your protection <laughs> on. <laughs> What's your favorite podcast? Uh, my favorite podcast is probably Smart Passive Income with Pat Flynn. Good one. Good one. Great one. If you were to wake up in the morning and there was only one business related task you could do for the day, what would you do? Uh, probably phone, phone some leads. Yeah. Get on the phone. Like, Love it. That's going to have the most impact. It's a good one. Uh, what is one subscription that you could not do without? Got to have it. Spotify. Okay. Dig it, dig it. And uh, final question here for you, Ben. If you had a billboard message that would reach millions and millions of people, what would you put on your billboard? Be kind to people. I like that a lot. How many words is that? Yeah, four, pe four words. I think we could fit that two lines, the proper font. I think that would work. Yeah. Ben said it, I agree with it. Ben, thank you so much for joining the show. All right, thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me.